what's up game devs this is Dan with you contribute games and in this video we're gonna take a look at how to make a pendulum swing All right, game dev. So in this video, again, we're looking at how to make a pendulum. Uh, first things first, what I am going to do is import an asset package I've prepared. And you can get this from going to uh, the You Contribute Games website, signing up for our newsletter. There's a link right here. And there's one down in the description that you can go to um, that'll get you this 2D pendulum asset pack. Um, but we'll go ahead and import that into our um, into our scene and as you can see we've got a, a nice little pendulum right here and when we click play that pendulum's just going to automatically start swinging so if you're setting up a game and you want a pendulum obstacle in your 2d uh, platformer or 2d side scroller game or, or whatever type of game and, and even in a 3d game this logic is going to work the same you're just going to switch um, some of our 2d uh, physics blocks like our 2d hinge over to just the regular 3d hinge and things of that nature and uh, a lot of the logic is going to work in the same fashion so we're going to go ahead and walk through how to set up this 2d pendulum right here all right but now that we've got our assets imported let's go ahead and grab this pendulum and slide it over to the side and then we are going to go ahead and start a new pendulum. Now within the asset pack, you have the main scene, which is what we're working in right now. You also have a pendulum prefab, which is what we have built, what we were just looking at, the pendulum script, and then our art asset pack. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this art asset pack. I'm going to drag this pendulum two, which is the rock base into the scene and we'll put our pretty little rock right there and then we will grab the pendulum zero which is our pendulum arm I'm gonna drag it into the scene and I'm gonna place it right about there so I think that looks pretty good and uh, now let's go ahead and set up some colliders on these so I'm gonna drag the pendulum zero into pendulum two and just make that a part of it so if I wanted to move this around we can move one and the other follows. Um, but let's add a component and we're going to add a collider. So I want to use an edge collider. And I am going to then edit this collider and drag that point over here. And then I'm going to work my way around adding some points into our edge. I'll drag that end just over here and it kind of wraps around it. Let's go over to the arm of our pendulum. We'll do the same thing. Let's add an edge collider. Edit that edge collider. Let's we'll start this side over here. And then we're just going to click and drag. And for those of you uh, who aren't as familiar with the edge collider, all I'm doing is sliding my mouse over top of this and anywhere that little dot is I can left click and then drag that over to a point and let go and I'm just kind of continuing to just randomly grab any point it doesn't need to be a specific length you know, see I can grab right there and drag that all the way up here and it'll fall in line and then let's grab this end and we'll drag it right up here okay so the next component I want to add to my armbar is going to be a hinge and we want to use the hinge joint 2d so once we add that in, uh, the hinge joint is going to have an anchor point, which you see right here. And I'm going to take that hinge point, and on the y-axis, I'm going to drag that up so it sits just above the bar of our pendulum. And that's the point it's going to swing on. So that's kind of the, the pivot point. All right. 
Now, if you push play now, nothing really happens with our new pendulum, but I can I'll switch over to our scene view, and I can grab that and just kind of twist it, and you know, physics takes over from there. But we want that to start up and work on its own. So if I want to, I can go back into play, hit play, go over to our scene view, and I can turn this motor on, and then let's say add 100 to it, just so we can see it move. All right, so you see it's just pivoting around this pendulum point, and the rotation's going to continue to change, all right? But that's what we want to happen is, let's turn this motor off, and we'll see that it begins to rock back and forth. Now, that's the movement we want. But eventually, if we just let this rock, it's going to slow down and stop. So we need a way to give it a push. So uh, if you've ever pushed a kid on a swing set, that's the type of movement we're going for here. You know, you want to be standing right there about dead center, and then as the kid comes by, you want to give them a shove on the back and keep them moving in the right direction, right? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to add another component, which is going to be our pendulum script. Now within this pendulum script, we've got a couple different things. So let's go ahead and stop that. Um, we have, and we'll minimize these because we don't really need these right now. All right, so let's add that component back in the pendulum. And within the pendulum, we have a body 2D, we have a left push range, a right push range, and a velocity threshold. Now, we are going to get into those here in just a second, um, but for the body 2D, we really don't need to worry about because within the script, we are actually going to just let that be handled by our start function. And this script is fairly straightforward. Um, we have our public variables that we just covered for our body 2D, our left push range, our right push range, and our velocity threshold. Then within our start function, we set up the rigid body 2D component of our arm and add, you know, add that to our body 2D. We then take our velocity threshold and we set our body 2D dot angular velocity equal to whatever that threshold is starting out. So once the game, once we push play, it automatically has velocity. That's how we get it going. That's our initial push to get them swinging on the swing. Okay. Um, within our update function, every frame we call push and push is where the magic happens. Okay. So let's flip over and we're going to take a look at how push works. Okay, so we've moved over to our handy dandy you contribute games blackboard um, so that we can kind of walk through and give you a visual representation of what this code is actually doing for you. Um, so here's the code or specifically here's the the functionality within our push function uh, inside that script and what it's doing. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look and let's walk through that. So really we just have an if, else if, and several conditions that have to be met in order for these two functions to happen. So really we're only doing one of two things. We're, we're either setting the body 2D dot angular velocity equal to the velocity threshold, or we're setting that same variable to the velocity threshold times negative one. So that's setting it to the exact opposite. So we're either setting it to the velocity threshold or the exact opposite of the velocity threshold. Now here's why that positive and negative makes a difference. You know, within this, we have our pendulum. So a simple little pendulum. And we set up that anchor point, right? So we've added an anchor point to it, and that's going to swing back and forth on that anchor point. Now, set up a cross here just to kind of represent the zero horizon on the X, the zero on the Y, and then a circle for that Z rotation to just represent you know, how that's moving around this pivot point, right? So that you have that visual. Now, 
if we're swinging in this direction, right? This is positive. And if we're swinging in this direction, this is negative. Okay? So, positive to the right, negative to the left. All right? And then when we start to look at that code, that makes a little more sense. Now, the other variable that we had within our public variables on top of, uh, you know, we have our, our rotation, we have our angular velocity, and then we have our thresholds. So, we have our right threshold right here and we have our left threshold right here okay now again this is like pushing a kid on a swing when you're standing dead center pushing a kid on a swing your arms aren't but so long we're not stretch arms strong and we don't have go-go gadget arms so we can only reach so far well once that leaves at that range we can't push them anymore and then that zero mark kind of tells us which direction we need to push them so we don't want to push against the way they're headed otherwise we're stopping them right so we're saying that if transform dot rotation dot z is going to be greater than zero right so greater than zero and transform.rotation.z is less than that right push range. So that means that we are greater than zero, we're on this side, and we're less than that, so we're on this side. So this is the area that we're in right here, okay? And if we're within this area, then it says, take a look at your speed. Now, if our angular velocity is greater than zero, which is positive, right? So greater than zero is positive, meaning we're moving in this direction. And the angular velocity is less than the velocity threshold, or it's lower than our speed limit. Then I'd set the angular velocity equal to our velocity threshold. So that's like our cruise control, right? If you're going down the highway and it's a, the speed limit 65 miles per hour or you know 75 kilometers per hour or however that conversion works, then you want to say you set your cruise control and if you fall below that speed limit the car automatically presses the gas and brings you back up to that limit. And that's exactly what we're doing here is by setting that velocity threshold, that's our cruise control. So if we're on this side and we're below the, the, our speed threshold, we give it some gas and push it in this direction, which is going to cause us to swing up and gravity takes hold and then we're going to come back down, right? And once we cross back over to zero, you know, on that update iteration, we're no longer in this top if statement and we start we fall into this else if else if the rotation dot z is less than zero indicating excuse me now we are on this side right so now we're on this side of our zero and we are greater than the left push range right here. Now remember, now that we've moved into the negative side, things are a little backwards, right? Negative two, greater than negative five. There's your math lesson for today, kids. So uh, if we're on this side, we have to switch that, uh, that to greater than, so we can say, you know, if the, if we're less than or greater than this mark, right? So we're on this side or the right side of that, then we're within the area and then we look at our speed and we say if the angular velocity is less than zero remember we're moving this way we're moving to the left so now we're moving in the negative direction and the angular velocity is greater than the velocity threshold times negative one 
because we don't want a different speed on each side. We want the speed consistent. So we set that variable once. We just multiply it times negative 1 to put it on the negative sign. But we do say if it's greater than it, again, to say it so that we can say we're below this line, right? And if that's the case, then we're going to, again, give it a nice little push in this direction. And let gravity take hold bring them back down and once it crosses we start that process over again so it's going to be the same cycle back and forth and back and forth all right well that's going to wrap things up for today's lesson guys um, i'm going to put the code on screen real quick for just a few seconds for those of you wanting to type this up um, and add it into your own script or Go ahead and click the link right here. Click down at the link in the description. It's going to take you over to youcontributegames.com where you can pick up a copy of the script uh, as well as the entire asset pack that I imported in the beginning of this tutorial. Absolutely free of charge. You simply need to sign up for the You Contribute Games newsletter, which is going to notify you when awesome new content like this comes out. Stay in the know, know what's going on, and get your free assets, guys. All right, see you later. Oh no, the pendulum. It cut my legs off. I have no legs. I have no legs. So, click the link. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Send us an email at ycg at youcontributegames.com. See you in the next video. I have no legs. I have no legs. <laughs>